we're going to simplify algebraic expressions. Here we have two fractions, and the two fractions have different denominators. To add two fractions, they need to have the same denominator. And we can get equivalent fractions by multiplying the numerator and the denominator by the same number. So if I multiply uh, the 1 by 3 and the 2 by 3, I will have a fraction that has a denominator of 6. And I can add the 2 and reduce my fraction by dividing the numerator by 2 and the denominator by 2 and I have my answer. Here we're doing subtraction, but we still have to do the same thing in order to get a common denominator of 15. I'm going to multiply the numerator by 5, denominator by 5, and in this case, I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator each by 3. So our common denominator is going to be 20. And subtracting 5x from 12x, I get 7x. So we have denominators of x and 3. That means our common denominator is going to be 3x. So I've multiplied the numerator and denominator by 3. Here I'm going to multiply the numerator and denominator by x. So in this case, I already have a common denominator. And in this case, I have a denominator that is 4 multiplied by x minus 3. I also have an x minus 3 here. So if I take this rational expression and multiply the numerator and denominator by 4, I'll have common denominators. Notice I'm not even uh, going to expand. It's a lot more convenient to keep things like this. Uh, so common denominators and the numerator might as well expand it um, and then I'll have less terms to look at. I'll leave the denominator factored. So I see in my denominator I have an x plus 1 in both rational expressions. And I also have an x minus 4 factor in this rational expression. So I'm going to, I'm going to take that and I'm going to use it to get a common denominator in this rational expression. And so now I've got common denominators. And 
and I'm going to expand the numerator Okay, very similar situation. And we've got this extra factor of an eight. So now I'm going to go back and state restrictions on the variable. So there is no variable x in the original expression here that we're simplifying. So there's there can't be any restrictions on it. Um, same in this situation. Uh, if we look at uh, this expression that we're simplifying, uh, there are no restrictions on the value of x. x can be 0, and that's fine and we don't have any division by zero problems. In this situation, we cannot allow x to be zero. And so we write that for all of our steps. In this situation, if x is equal to 2, then 2 minus 2 would be 0, and we'd be dividing by 0. So therefore, x cannot be 2. In this question, very similar, uh, x cannot be 3, because if it were 3, this would be 0. We'd be dividing by 0. Uh, in this rational expression, we'd also be dividing by zero in this rational expression, so x cannot be three. And that continues. In this example that we did, we cannot allow x to be negative one because if it were negative one plus one would make zero, we'd be dividing by zero. Um, in, in this rational expression, it would also be dividing by zero in this rational expression because it would be zero times a number. And so the denominator would be zero. If x were four, then four minus four would make this zero. It would make the whole denominator zero. We'd be dividing by zero, which we're not allowed to do because it's not defined. So x is not negative one and or four. And we see that that continues and nothing, uh, we, we don't see any other restrictions arise. Uh, as long as we keep x from being negative one and four, we're okay. Example, x cannot be two because that would make this denominator zero and this denominator by uh, zero. So we keep checking and we don't see any other restrictions that we need to put in as long as we don't let allow we don't allow x to be 2 we're okay